I want to tell you about the biggest feeding frenzy in the deep ocean. It's an event that gets swarmed by marine life from miles away. First it's sharks, crabs and octopuses, slimy prehistoric scavengers, strange bacteria, and bone-eating zombie worms. Yes, I said zombie worms, and yes, they're even more bizarre than you think. It's all part of the extraordinary world of a whale fall. Ocean X was doing some submersible training near the Strait of Gibraltar when we came across something we never expected. A whale fall. A oh, whale. Wow. Is that what I think it is? A whale fall is when a dead whale sinks thousands of feet down to the pitch black ocean floor to decompose. And they're extremely rare to find. Fewer than a hundred natural whale falls have ever been discovered. So this was a surprise to even our most seasoned sub-pilots. Dave was there the day we discovered the whale fall. I've been on a thousand dives and this is the only time I've seen something this spectacular. Now, usually in the animal kingdom, one death doesn't mean much more than a quick meal. But a whale is different. The biggest whales can weigh up to 400,000 pounds. That's about the same as 33 elephants. For creatures that live on the bottom of the ocean, a body like that is the equivalent of a thousand years worth of food. A thousand years. So how does this all go down? Well, first, a whale's gotta die. Sad, I know, but it's the circle of life. Everything dies, right? And whales die for all sorts of reasons. It might be from disease or a boat strike. Believe it or not, these massive mammals can even be attacked by predators. In fact, in our show Ocean Explorers, we caught a pack of orcas hunting a humpback and her calf on camera. So believe me, it happens. They're like wolves, they're surrounding the thing. So one way or another, the whale dies. But they're not gonna just torpedo down to the bottom of the ocean floor. Gases from the initial stages of decomposition will keep a whale's body on the surface for a while. This bus-sized carcass is the best lunch in town for seabirds and sharks. But this carcass has places to be. So after a few days, the gas is released, the body sinks, and this is where the real fun begins. Now, for a moment, I want you to imagine you're a crab. You live 3,000 feet below the surface, and life ain't easy. It's pitch black, freezing cold, and there isn't much to eat. Every night for dinner, it's the same meal, marine snow, these tiny flakes of organic material that drift down from above. But one day, everything changes. You look up and your little crabby mind can't even comprehend what's happening. A 40-ton whale carcass drops from above and crashes to the seafloor. More food than you could possibly eat in your life just fell out of the sky. The loudest dinner bell in the entire ocean has just rang and the whale fall has officially begun. Scientists call this first part the mobile scavenger stage. Deep sea sharks show up in minutes. Sleeper sharks and six gills that can grow up to 20 feet long tear at the blubber. Our sub team is no stranger to six gills, by the way. Oh, there's shit, there's shit, there's shit. Whoa. Smaller animals feast on the whale too, like brittle stars, lobsters, sea pigs, and isopods, which are like deep sea roly polies. But the creepiest scavenger of this stage is the hagfish. The hagfish is one of those creatures that hasn't changed in millions of years. Kinda like this guy and these. A hagfish is this slimy tube of muscle that looks a little like an eel until you realize it doesn't have any eyes. Instead, it's got a ring of little tentacles around a tooth-lined hole that burrows into the dead whale like a slimy drill bit. These little cuties are happy to eat just about anything off the sea floor. Our team found this out firsthand in Norway when we laid out bait to catch some isopods. When we pulled up the trap, it was completely clogged with hagfish. Blech. During this feeding frenzy, scavengers can eat roughly 100 pounds each day. But even so, whales are so unbelievably big that this 24-hour buffet can still take up to a year to finish. Once all the good bits have been eaten and the bigger creatures move on with their lives, we enter the second phase. This is the enrichment opportunist stage. For the next several months or years, smaller scavengers pick clean every last morsel of soft tissue left. The big winners here are crabs, octopuses, snails and amphipods, and worms. But wait, there's a twist. These scavengers don't just eat, they multiply and they evolve. There is just so much food available that some species of mussels and snails actually change within this microecosystem to eat different parts of the whale, a process called adaptive radiation. It's like evolution in fast forward. After some time, even this party starts to die down. All that's left are the bones. But when you're thousands of feet below sea level and not ready to get back to that marine snow, even bones can start to sound pretty good. 
we've arrived at something called the sulfophilic stage, aka the sulfur loving stage. Do you remember a few minutes ago when I said this party lasts for 50 years? Well, this is why. Whale bones are full of lipids and proteins, which most animals can't eat. But to quote Jeff Goldblum, Life, uh, finds a way. It turns out certain bacteria can break down the bones. This releases a cloud of chemicals called sulfides. It doesn't smell great, but it does provide nutrients for other bacteria, which multiply until there are dense mats of them on and around the bones. Over 200 species of clams, mussels, snails, and crabs have been spotted munching on this bacteria during this slow burn stage of a whale fall. But you may ask, what the heck is that red fuzzy stuff? That, my friends, is the zombie worm. Now, if the hagfish is strange, the zombie worm is positively alien. Its real name is Osidax, which means bone devourer, because, well, it eats bones. Although even saying that isn't quite right, because this weird worm doesn't even have a mouth or a stomach. A bacteria that lives inside the zombie worm breaks the bone into nutrients, and, well, scientists don't even really understand how it eats. We're still learning. The zombie worm was only discovered in 2002 at a whale fall. And if you don't think they're that weird yet, let's talk about it's romantic life. The worm you can see is the female, but males do exist. They're just a hundred thousand times smaller, microscopic, and hundreds have been found living their entire lives on a female, hoping for that one chance to fertilize an egg. Not only do these creatures seem alien, but scientists think if we do find other life in our solar system, like on the icy moons of Jupiter or Saturn, it will probably resemble creatures like this, something that lives off of chemicals instead of oxygen and sunlight. But back on Earth, the party is finally coming to an end. Some scientists propose a final fourth stage, though we haven't been studying whale falls for long enough to really confirm this. The fourth stage could be the reef stage. While there's nothing left to eat, even the bones can be useful for some creatures. You see, much of the seafloor is like a desert, nothing but sand and sediment for miles. For filter feeders like anemones, it's best to latch onto something high up so you can snatch passing food out of the current. A whale fall quite literally drops a reef into the deep sea, where the skeleton could provide a perfect anchor for these filter feeders until the bones finally disintegrate. And that is the end of our whale fall. It seems like a momentous event like this is rare, and while they are hard to find, it actually happens a lot. Even though only a handful of whale falls have actually been observed and studied, scientists believe there may be as many as 700,000 scattered across the globe, only a couple miles from one another. And if the thought of all those dead whales bums you out, maybe this will help. Whale populations are on the rise. They've been making a recovery since we put an end to the whaling industry of the last century. More whales means more whale falls, which means more thriving deep sea ecosystems and happy hagfish. So the next time you see some beautiful shots like this of a whale breaching the surface, remember, it's part of a cycle of life that will continue long after it's gone, feeding and sheltering countless creatures in that world beneath the waves. That's it from us at OceanX on Whale Falls. If you like this video, please be sure to subscribe so you can follow along with all of our adventures across the world's oceans.